look like. Uh, also, I just wanted to share with you a copy of one of the petition that I saw in uh, Parliament. Uh, and I think uh, after this, we will share it uh, with you because I managed to get a hold of this copy yesterday. Uh, it's one of the petitions that was in Parliament submitted in, um, in uh, 2018. Uh, entitled a report on the consideration of petition by the executive regarding the variation of boundaries of Mount Elgon Forest Reserve. Now we all know that most of our forests have been encroached. And when you read this report, um, uh, there was a request and KFS approved. Um, and uh, there are quite a number of parcels listed. Actually, we are talking of almost close to about 50 parcels that have been allocated to schools, churches, um, uh, you know, for building, constructing the chief's office and everything. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, this issue went to cabinet and cabinet approved and uh, cabinet then also wrote its letter jointly, uh, CS Tobiko in June 29th, uh, 2018, they wrote a letter jointly uh, for now execution. And you can imagine from the time the letter was written in 2018, up to now, the land is still under the forest. Uh, uh, the land is still registered under the forest. Uh, 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 you know, you, you know, the, the KFS as the owner of the land. So I don't understand why these kind of things continue to happen in this country. Uh, yet execution and administration remains to be a big challenge. So that's just to share with you in a nutshell what's happening. And I believe that um, uh, from the other presenters that are going to speak, that will be able to look at this uh, critical resource and see what is it that we can do. Thank you so much, over to you, Sheila. Thank you, Steve, uh, for taking us through that. Um, now, I think we can start with Anne, uh, because she joined earlier, and Christian has just joined now. He, jo he joined, but I think he dropped off at some point. So. And I think you can go first, um, just share with us your presentation for today. And then if we have any questions, we will ask after your presentation. Karibu, Anne. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning. Good morning, you can hear me. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, thank you. My name is Anne Antek. I'm uh, with the East African Wildlife Society as the head of policy and advocacy. I'm happy to see uh, colleagues here and people we've worked in the past in the sector. Um, Sheila, please give me the sharing rights. I, I have a presentation. You can now share. Okay. Just a minute. Uh, just a minute, uh, Sheila, perhaps I can.
For those who are joining in, uh, we want to take this opportunity to welcome you. Antec is uh, working on uh, projecting our presentation, so let's just be patient with her. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I can present now. Yeah, you can continue. On. The, Steve, thank you, thank you for that, and sorry for the for the hitch. So my name is Anne. Um, I'm going to make this presentation on behalf of the Kenya Forest Working Group on the Forest Conservation and Management uh, Amendments Bill of uh, 20, uh, number 53 of 2021. So I'll give a bit of background on the Kenya Forest Working Group, uh, which is a forum of uh, individuals and organizations both from government and non-governmental organization, uh, from international and international organizations. So the forum is actually open for all organizations and individuals. And the objective of the forum is actually to promote forest, uh, sound forest conservation and management practices in Kenya. So the forest, the, the, the Kenya Forest Working Group works through uh, research, advocacy, and partnership. And it's currently chaired by Dr. Jora Mogombe, and we have other members, but some of the members of the management committee includes the Nature Kenya, WWF, NACOFA, KFS, KFRI, among others. Uh, the forum is being hosted by the East African Wildlife Society. And we have other, uh, forums which is being hosted by the society such as the Wetlands Forum and the Wildlife Forum. So if you wish to join this forum, you're, you're welcome. And to the Forest Conservation and Management Act of 2016, Sheila, I'm struggling to... I need to... Oh. You're breaking up, Anne. You're saying you need to? Okay. All right. The Forest Conservation and Management Act of 2016, Section 34, uh, provides that uh, a petition to the National Assembly on variation of boundaries shall only be considered if the petitioner demonstrates that such a petition will, one, endanger, will not one, endanger any world, threaten or endangered species, or adversely affect its value as a water catchment area, and compromise biodiversity conservation, cultural site protection of the forest, or its use for educational, recreational health, research purposes, or research purposes. The section further provides that such a petition must be subject to one, environmental impact assessment, which most likely is done, most of the cases is done by NEMA, uh, should also go through public participation. We all know that we already have guidelines on public participation, and also should be in line with parliamentary uh, procedures, Act of 2012, understanding orders of a relevant house. So uh, the Forest Act, through uh, the Miscellaneous Amendments Bill of 2018 was amended to insert Section 34-2A, which reads that uh, a, petition, a petition under subsection one shall only be forwarded to the National Assembly by the service. The service here means the Kenya Forest Service. And that Section 34-1 and two recognizes the role of the National Assembly in variation of boundaries for revocation of public forest that should be read with 342A, that is under the amendments I mentioned of 2018. So while reading the Forest Act of 2016, there's need to read along with the amendments of 2018, which provided for the 2A, that is the role of KFS in, um, in providing technical support in such processes. But this session has since been deleted. So um, 
what does the forest management uh, amendment, forest conservation and management bill uh, say? So the house procedure, the house, uh, the procedure and house rules committee has introduced this bill. The, 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 the committee is being chaired by the, by the deputy speaker, Honorable Moses Cheboy. And the, the proposal is to delete 342A of the Forest Act in order to remove the requirements for a petitioner under the, uh, the Forest Act to be recommended for submissions to parliament by the Kenya Forest Service. Like I said, the 2A provides for Kenya Forest Service to give that technical support. So the current law requires that KFS make technical recommendations to parliament on the uh, effects of any proposed forest boundary variation on existing, on endangered, rare, and threatened species, and the ecological sensitive area, as mentioned earlier. So our, our arguments have been, as the Kenya Forest Working Group, is uh, first, why now? Uh, then second, the, the procedure in the House Rules Committee has not demonstrated the urgency to amend the, the, the law, the Forest Act. And the reason for choosing this act, other than the natural resources law, such as water, wildlife, and others that have similar provisions. So why the forest act alone? The other one is, why are we doing it in piecemeal? There's already a process by the ministry to review the whole, uh, the whole law. Like uh, Itela said, last year or the other year, we were doing, um, contributing towards the forest policy. And now there's a current review of the whole act. Why are we doing it in piecemeal? The other thing is that um, the bill has also failed to demonstrate how the principal act has offended the petition to parliament, to parliament act of 2012 and the standing order of the house. So those are our arguments as, uh, as a Kenya forest working group. So we can talk about the implications if this uh, bill goes through. One, uh, there will be increased cases of exition, which are seen reduced drastically when the Forest Act of 2005 came, came into place. The Forest Act of 2005 actually had the 2A, where it provided for the role of KFS. But then in 2006, it didn't have, that's why it was provided in the Forest Amendments Act, I mean, miscellaneous amendments of 2018. So the 2005 made it hard to, to vary the boundaries of the forest. And that's why we've, we've seen the reduced exition. The other thing is that uh, the forest cover in Kenya is now estimated at 7.4 and has been in an upward trajectory for the past 15 years due to the progressive law and, and the introduction of the 2A. The other thing is that um, the move to amend the law will derail the government's efforts from achieving its uh, national and international commitments such as the constitution of Kenya the Vision 2030, the Agenda 4, the, the, CB, the Convention on Biological Biodiversity, the UNFCC, looking at the Paris Agreement, and other international commitments such as the SDG. What is the Kenya Forest Working Group uh, doing? Uh, to, to ensure that uh, this law doesn't go too fast, we, we issued a, uh, we released a press, uh, a press, a presser uh, two weeks ago, which was captured in most of the media houses. We also organized for a virtual stakeholders meeting, which discussed the amendment bills and gave out a recommendation. We had over 30 institutions which attended that meeting two weeks ago. Last week, we also petitioned the parliament uh, the National Assembly, uh, and the petition was signed by 31 institutions. We also had a joint presser, you can see a picture to your right, or is it to your left, uh, where partners issue a joint press statement with many other organizations. We are also carrying out online campaigns and um, our publication through the Swara Magazine of the East African Wildlife Society. The bill was mentioned on third, uh, of February as a pending bill and will be like Edithella mentioned tabled for the first reading, but I've seen a notice uh, through one of the group that we have a, a discussion this afternoon. I think we are here to confirm. Uh, Itella, you can mention that, that the, the, it should be tabled this afternoon also, so we need to follow up. We, we have um, 
We are currently reaching out to members of parliament. I'm happy to hear that CAK has already talked to some. So we are requesting that at least as many of us reach out to our members of parliament. Uh, lastly, how can the uh, CAK partner with Kenya, w Kenya uh, Forest Working Group and other partners? I think we've requested that we need to intensify uh, reaching out to a national assembly and even the Senate and even the county assembly. I think there's need to put a lot of pressure to these houses. We have requested all our members and partners to also petition the National Assembly. So the more the petitions, the better. We've been participating in our partners uh, meetings. So we urge also other partners to join in our meetings and also in our social media campaigns. So uh, please, but we have hashtags. If you wish to participate, we can share the hashtags to, to just uh, talk about this, uh, this amendment. So, Thank you so much, Sheila. I hand it back to you. Uh, thank you, Anne, uh, for your presentation. Although your slides were not moving, uh, it was stuck on the first slide. Maybe we'll share the, the presentation and we can share with all participants after the session. Um, so I'll open up the session for anyone who has a question uh, Um, I'll open the presentation, uh, um, the session for anyone who has questions uh, to ask Anne or any clarification. Hi, good morning. I, I think what you can do is you raise up your hand and then we'll let you uh, speak so that we don't speak um, on each other. Okay. Welcome, Ashira. Go ahead and ask your question or any input. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sheila. I, I wanted to find out what is the position of uh, Kenya Forest uh, in regard to these amendments? Um, are they in favor of them? And I like the comparison of what you've said uh, during the presentation that uh, other provisions in other, uh, other laws, they have the same kind of provision that they want to, to remove from the Kenya Forest Service Act. And, and that doesn't aga very well. But you have also wondered why the agency. I want anybody to do a research backward and realize one thing, that our forests always get to be exercised out during election years because they are used as a currency. And this is what we need to guard because we are going to keep having elections three year out, year out. And if we cannot tame this, um, kind of uh, tendency, we will end up with no forest. Our arguments are solid that we are trying to get to 10% a constitutional requirement. We are at seven. We are opening loopholes for people to exercise forest at will. Uh, somehow we need to find a way of just saying no. I don't see parliament and members of parliament being very keen on helping us here uh, because with due respect to all of them uh, and not targeting any one of them, uh, they also at the back of their mind would be beneficiaries depending on which party they belong or how they belong. So we, we need to find a strategy of saying, if we fail in parliament, are we able to take this argument to a litigation, challenging that uh the exposure of uh, forest to where part participation is not going to be very easy and where the technical knowledge of kenya forest is not available uh for government uh, we we need to find a way of of, of uh, dealing with issues of, of of forest and i know sometimes sometimes back uh steve will bear me witness that uh we wanted to have an overarching environmental and natural resource act, which we tried to move and we reached somewhere, we even had a draft. Um, I think 
as CAK, we may need to go back and retrace ourselves and start having that so that we do not deal with sectoral environmental and forest and wildlife and water still in a piecemeal so that we can have a, an overarching way of looking at them. But otherwise, if you are going to have one provision protecting wildlife, but that one same provision is not protecting forest, and you find that there is forest where animals are, we may end up not even having anywhere the animals will disperse to or where anything that is there. So I think CAK, what we have done with the petition and the Kenya Forest Forum, the best we can do is at the back of our mind, let's start collecting enough evidence. Because I, I, I think when you say there is no agency in this one, it is not that there is no agency. The agency is there. It is only that you don't share it with them but they have the agency to pass that uh, provision. And, and I would want someone to bear me witness. Election year is always announces danger for it. Thank you. Thank you, Ashira. Um, if you're not speaking, kindly mute yourself so that we can have some order. Um, and do you want to respond to Washira? Uh, thank you, Sheila. I agree with Washira on uh, on uh, yes, you had, you had asked the position of the Kenya Forest Working Group. It's uh, we are saying no to the amendments, and I think most of the partners have also said no on on the issue of uh, why the Forest Act and not other laws and not other related laws. I think it's the question everybody is asking. And I think the answer is obvious. And why, why the urgency? Yeah, like you mentioned, every, I mean, every election year, there has to be some amendments to some law, one of it being forest. So we are really uh, concerned with that. And we are still, uh, we, we still, we are still saying no to the, to, the, to the amendments. About the rest, I think I have other colleagues from the Kenya Forest Working Group who can respond to some of the concerns you've, uh, you've raised. Just a quick uh, addition. I think Washira raised the issue, what is the position of the Kenya Forest Service? Uh, if I'm not wrong, I think Washira, that was the question that you had asked. What's the yes. position of KFS on these amendments? And I think, uh, yes. is that correct, Washira? Yes, it is correct, Steve. Yeah. All right. And could you respond to that? Um, I can see some members of the Kenya Forest Service here, but looking, going by the, I'm not representing them, but looking by going by their statements, I think they're saying also yes. Uh, George, George Tarus, I can see you here, but I know KFS has come out strong to oppose the amendments. Is there anyone from KFS or I think, uh, Steve, I reading from their statements and their petition, petition that has been their position. I absolutely agree with you. Uh, for now, that's, um, that's actually their position. I can see the hand of Rudolf Mahanu is up. Rudolf, you have the floor. Yes, uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, thank you for organizing this meeting. I have a quick question. I think you have interacted a bit with the members of parliament. So it's interesting, what do they say is actually the main reason for suggesting this kind of move? Do they have some fear about KFS? And I don't know how, when you talk to them, what are they saying is the main reason they want to go this direction? because you can't understand it, so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rudolf, for asking that question. Yesterday, we had an opportunity not to meet um, a kind of uh, parliament in a structured manner, 
uh, we had a session with the ICCF and uh, ICCF is the International Conservation Caucus, uh, which uh, has been coordinating uh, parliamentary meetings. So we had a meeting with ICCCF and within that meeting, we had uh, one member of parliament joining us, that is uh, Gachu, uh, who is a member of the Natural Resources Committee. And uh, I really do not want to deliver on this, but just to give you a clear understanding that actually that bill is actually the bill of the National Assembly. Uh, when a bill is originated from the Procedures and Rules Committee, it's actually a bill of the House. So it's not a bill of the committee, but it's a bill of the entire National Assembly. That's according to Honorable uh, 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 Chachu when we spoke with him yesterday. And um, because it's a bill that is driven by the constitutional requirements that every Kenyan has a right to petition parliament, and based on the number of petitions that they have received, I will just mention a few. They received a petition for Mount Elgon, which I shared uh, earlier on. They have also received a petition from Langata constituency, uh, where Honorable Nick Korir comes from. And there, are, there is also another petition from Narok and several other petitions from all places, including Gaindate also that are in parliament. And parliament find themselves a little bit unable to move because yes, they receive the petitions, but it seems like section 34, according to them, KFS is not submitting any petitions to parliament for them to approve. And so parliamentarians have resorted to petition parliament directly. And I think that's a genesis. They want to expedite and make that constitution requirement that every Kenyan has a right so that they are seen to be doing things. So to me, it's about, it's about the question that uh, Dr. Walubenga has just shared on the chat, that the genesis of uh, these amendments is actually by members of parliament who come from areas where forests have been encroached. Uh, so to my little understanding, uh, that is actually what is driving the amendments. It's the entire parliamentary committee, not just the procedures and rules committee. It's everybody in parliament. In fact, according to him, he was saying, it is actually a parliament bill. So if it is allowed to proceed in the manner it is, you can be guaranteed it will pass through. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Steve, for that. Uh, Rudo, are you okay? Or well, you have a further question? Yes, yes, yes. It has clarified what I wanted to, to know. So thanks, Steve oh. and, uh, and Walubengo. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Washira, you have another question or? Those of us who have, looked, yes, I do. Those of us who have looked at that bill, what is the citation on top? What does it say? is a reason for amendment from their arguments. It doesn't cite any reason. They just go straight on to the amendments. Yeah, because they should be able to say why they are amending it. Um, uh, the memoranda for amendment should be able to say the reason why they are amending. And if KFS is not approving petition, it means that in their technical analysis, they are not in, they, it does not meet the threshold of uh, exercising uh, that for it. And when you mentioned that in my area of Langata, we are actually asking for exercise in forest. Um, it, just, it just tells you exactly what is the motive uh, because what forest is there in Langata that need to be exercised? Everything is gone. And what is remaining is a very small thread between Bomas and uh, Langata, the dog section. So I don't see how and why uh, there would be somebody saying that there are petitions from Langata, unless it's a question of settling people uh, for or rewarding them for whatever reason it is. And that's why if it is a, if it's a parliament bill, then it means it was moved there through the, the rules of uh, the, the committee, as you said, then we have no chance at all. If it was from an MP, we could challenge it. But if it is from the house, I, I hardly see any one of them saying no. 
uh, we so I would say we start thinking different way of uh, looking at the whole uh, the whole uh, lot of that. And one of the key things we may want is if it is our suspicion is right that it's about elections, then we could prolong either through court system until the elections are done. Uh, and those who will need to be rewarded will be rewarded something different and they lose interest in it. So we, we, we can work from a strategy of vagueness and strategy of delaying uh, as we challenge the whole thing. Uh, otherwise, sometimes just moving and trusting the same people who are making the rules that they are dishonoring, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And that's why I think in conservation setup in Kenya, we need to change our strategy. Uh, waiting to react to parliamentarians, wanting to work with them, they laugh with us, then they go and pass such a law. Uh, uh, I don't think so. And Steve, you know what happened to us with the railway as it was passing the park. Um, having an environmental amendment in the Teller bill, it, it all just tells you how much uh, the, we, we need to look at uh, some of these areas. So even as we'll be thinking about CAK and then the strategies in coming years, I think it is very, very important that we have a different model of uh, advocacy and lobbying. Uh, what we have been using it has not helped us. We are losing parks, we are losing forests, water catchment areas, we are losing open spaces in Nairobi. Um, there is something we are not doing right. And I'm not saying you, Steve, or CAK. All of us who believe in protecting our environment. Excellent. Thank you, Washira. Uh, Dominic Walubengo has just shared on chat. He's not able to raise his hand. Could, could, could you give him an opportunity to speak, Sheila? Thank you, Steve. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear. Okay. Uh, just to continue the, uh, my friend Washira's uh, uh, statement, Langata is a special case because uh, some forest land was uh, given out and procedurally to some people and they build houses. So there are houses on forest land, which has not been decazated. That's why the MP for Langata would like to regularize that by uh, having uh, that area be declared a non-forest. There are many areas in Kenya where forests were given away without due process, but they were not decazated, but people settled in them. Uh, one is Chebuk on Mandelgon. I think Steve mentioned that earlier on. Uh, People were given land many, many years ago and they cut the forest and settled. And now the population has tripled. Officially, the place is still a forest. Uh, there were also, there's also the case of Kimende. I think some of you must have passed through Kimende when you drive to the west. Most of that town is actually a gazetted forest. So um, a few years ago, I think it was the, the parliament between 2013 and 2017, an effort was made to regularize these uh, forests, which are not forests. But the minister uh, uh, came across a lot of headwinds and they stopped. This is not the first time parliament is trying to do this. Of course, the members of parliament from forested areas would like uh, to settle people in the forest because they look at forest land as uh, land waiting to be settled. The video you showed us earlier on as we started of Kagamega, have been that is channel place. The population growth is a major, major uh, threat to forests. So I think there are, two, there are so many uh, reasons why forests are under threat. Of course, the, the, the population, uh, the voters want uh, land. I've just read to regularize means to sanitize. Yes, it was an illegal, illegal act. Uh, a president at that time, uh, the president passed by a place and people said, want land and said uh, to the PC, give these people this forest land. And they were given. And they've stayed there for that long. So uh, what can we do about those people? What can you do? Do you want to move uh, uh, Kimende uh, as a town out of the forest? 
Uh, do you want to move uh, part of uh, Masida Muliro University out of the forest? Do you want to move part of Kitala out of the forest? My view is that our own forest agencies or our own government agencies have been too slow. Uh, when the president announces something like, give this people a forest, they should then use that technical knowledge and prevent it and not just let it happen and then later on cry about it. So these difficulties are all over the country, by the way. There are a lot of forests which are not forests. Uh, lastly, I live in Njoro, and between Njoro and uh, the Mao Forest, it's now 40 kilometers. It used to be something like five kilometers from Njoro. Now it's 40 kilometers away. And this forest is still forest land, but people have settled on it. There are farms and schools. So government agencies have let us down in many ways. Thank you, uh, thank you Steve and uh, Shela. Thank you, Shela, would you want to go to the next presentation by Christian or? Uh... Um, we have two more questions. I think we can finish those and then we'll go to Christian. Uh, Kiplimo. Oh, thank you so much. Mine is just an addition to what uh, Dr. Tari has just presented on many areas that had been given out many years back by the preceding governments. And he gave examples of Kimende, but I'm talking about my area, whereby there's a question uh, I think Rudolf asked about where is the genesis of these amendments of this bill? And it's purely from the parliamentarians. For example, in Baringo County, where I come from, come from there's a place called Maji Mazuri. It's a land whereby team cells used to do saw milling many years, as early as 1947. But people settled down there for many years. Around 2013, during the campaign trail, you could hear the politicians saying they'll give titles to those lands. And it's clearly that uh, if forest is not protected now, it's a disaster that is looming for the whole population across the country. And around 2017, there was a population, there was a lot of resistance from the locals, the Council of Elders, asking the motives of the MP, why did it want that that place be given land to the people? And now you see every election ring here, we see politicians trying to untwist issues of law. As Dakar has alluded about the case of Langata, where people were given land by government and people have built houses. So it's a similar problem across the country. Even here in Baringo County, we are having those issues. And I think uh, it's upon us as uh, different sectors working closely on environmental issues to pull, pull together and change the strategy on how we defend the forest. Because once this thing is open, the water resource will become a problem. And where we sit here in Baringo County, the forest is a looming disaster. Once it's left it's to the hands of the political elites, will have problems. And we look forward whereby the multi-agency government technical team can stand and advise even the president when they are making those roadside statements on issues of land. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Kip Limo. Uh, Paula, you still have your question or you have changed your mind? I think you'll go after Christian's presentation. Okay. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Anne, for your presentation. And thank you, um, all participants who asked questions. Um, we've noted all the concerns down and we will um, come up with the action plan. So I now welcome Christian. Um, let me see if he's, yeah, he's, 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 yeah. he's on the call. Welcome Christian and share with us your presentation. <coughs> Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, very nice to, to be able to meet the conservation fraternity this morning. Um, I didn't know that I was supposed to make a presentation, actually. I just joined this group as anybody else with a purpose of understanding what kind of actions we can, we can take from now onwards towards convincing the parliament not to enact that amendment bill. But uh, since I've been given the floor, there are a couple of uh, comments I would like to make. Uh, 
first of all, there was the question about the position of the Kenya Forest Service. Uh, you may recall that the chairman of the board of the Kenya Forest Service, which is the policy body of the service, issued a statement that is very clear and uh, reject that uh, amendment to the act. You might have seen also communications being issued by the Ministry of Environment and Forestry going alongside the same line and opposing that uh, amendment to the act. So it is very clear that in this specific case, we have a lead and expert body within the government of Kenya who are also themselves opposing to the proposed amendment to the Act. Um, now, I, I've been trying to understand myself what is the process when somebody uh, petition uh, the Kenya Forest Service for a boundary to be altered or forest to be partially excised or fully excised. And uh, when the petition comes to the service, it goes to the board, the board deliberate on it. And then the, the decision by the board is being shared, as I understand, directly with the petitioner. And the recommendation of the board is being sent to the ministry for the ministry to share it with the National Assembly. So that's, as I understand, the, the current process within the Kenya Forest Service, which means that from this understanding, the petitioner has been kept informed about the, the KFS board decision. So it could not be that a lack of communications could have triggered that process. Now, I would like to, to, to make some comments based on what Dominique Walubango uh, mentioned. I mean, clearly we are we are having extensive and numerous uh, areas of forest that have been allocated by the government to individuals to settle, so to to communities to settle, but the due process of the gazettement was not followed thereafter by the forest department. Uh, I can mention uh, to, to add to the list that uh, Dominic mentioned, uh, Geta. Uh, Geta settlements was established in the, in the 1970s by the first president of this nation, and the land is still part of the Aberdeer Forest Reserve and Kipipiri Forest Reserve. So one may, one may wonder whether that could not be the, the real motive behind this, uh, this, uh, this amendment is actually to regularize uh, basically all those, old ex, all those old de facto excision while actually legally they have not yet taken place. But then I, I decided to inquire from the chief conservator of forest about how many petitions he has seen since he got that position. I think uh, Julius Camo became CCF uh, a little less than three years ago. And Christian, are you still on? Yeah, we seem to have lost him. Uh, can't also hear him. Let me try and look at you. <laughs> Sorry, can you hear me now? I guess I've been disconnected. Yes, we can hear you now, Christian. Should I, should I continue? So, so my feeling is that many of those old historical uh, de facto excisions that have not been formalized are, are not the, the, the trigger because people feel very, very secure on the land. They have a title deed. Uh, uh, the issue of the official degazettement is, is not basically a, a critical issue. And also those, those settlements are not being challenged by, uh, for example, the Ministry for Environment and, and, and Forestry. We just know that those are cases that have to be formalized as, at some stage, but nobody feels totally insecure because of that. So in, in my views, and I also asked the CCF what could have been the trigger, and clearly there may be a, a couple of more recent cases that could have triggered this case. I mean, uh, uh, Gong Road Forest Reserve 
the case that uh, Dominique Walubango referred to, but it's true that uh, some forest land was allocated to three private developers never been excised properly. And uh, the, uh, the, the CS in charge of environment and forestry tried to, to, to repossess the land. And that has brought to the MP of the area to petition the, the parliament and to stop the minister from reprocessing the land. And then finally, the, uh, the parliament recommended that uh, uh, the MP seek of a, of a resident on that land seek for that specific land to be excised alongside, uh, according to section 34 of the Forest Act, which of course called for the petition to be, to be first recommended or for the, an endorsement to be made by the by the board of Kenya Forest Service. So it's clearly, if you remove Kenya Forest Service board from uh, from the equations, uh, basically the petition goes to go back straight to to Parliament, which already has recommended for that excisions to take place under the Forest Act. So basically, you got the excisions and and the land is now secure. And uh, I, I was also being being told that Mbobut could be also one of the trigger behind uh, that uh, that petition. This is my little understanding. But I think we, we can try to understand and understand as much as we can, but I think we also have to figure out now what do we do next? Uh, I, I, I really believe that uh, uh, member of parliament are those that we have to engage. There are several ways to engage them. Uh, I, I, I do recall that at, at some earlier meeting organized by the Kenya Forest Working Group, it was, uh, it was agreed that uh, CFS, Community Forest Associations, petition their own MP and copy those petitions to, uh, to the National Assembly, uh, the Ministry and KFS, and also the Kenya Forest Working Group so that uh, member of parliament feel the pressure from their own constituent. Uh, you know, me, if I make some notes, who I am, uh, I'm just, a, I'm just a, a, a foreigner residing in Kenya. I don't, I don't even vote. But clearly, if CFS members start petitioning their own MP, it might have more, more weight. So I understand that quite a number of CFA has already sent their petitions. I think it would be really good to, to make sure that they all do so and that we have uh, um, an inventory of those petitions or a collection of those petitions, I think that will add some, uh, some weight in the case. And then, and then clearly, I, I, I fully agree, we have to engage those members of parliament. Uh, they have the power to, to, to enact that amendment that may actually benefit them. So clearly, they may be more inclined to, to endorse it than to reject it from the, from the word go. So we will have to be to be quite smart in the way we engage them, for them to be convinced that actually it is not to their benefit or the benefit of a nation if they care for the public interest to move ahead. So I mean, those are the, the few comments that I wanted to make. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't know that uh, anybody was expecting me to make any presentation whatsoever, but uh, I'm, I'm just here joining you as a, as a regular uh, member of this group and uh, looking to 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 basically forge a, a, a very concrete way forward on the next step. Sorry, sorry about that, Christian, that it wasn't clear on email that you're supposed to make a presentation, but all the same thanks for your, um, your presentation to us today. Um, so I welcome anyone who has any question or clarification. Um, from Christian's uh, presentation. I can see Paula's hand is up, Paula. Sorry, mine is not a question or a clarification, but perhaps I, I feel like we need to uh, agree on actions. Uh, what are we going to do? Some really interesting ideas have been raised and one of them, uh, and uh, Sheila, I had sent a whole list of actions that we can take, which uh, I don't know if CAK is going to move forward, but one, one major strategy is to organize briefings with the uh, parliamentarians so that they can understand uh, the diversity of views and issues which are coming from many different sectors, not just the wildlife conservation or the forestry sector. So I think that that is something really important that we need to have um, some agreement and, and 
way forward on because I feel like a lot of ideas are being suggested, but there's no action. We're, we're still talking. We need to take actions. Uh, the other thing that has been suggested, which I think is a brilliant idea, is that we invite, uh, we find one person in every single um, constituency to do a petition and get 1,000 signatures in every single constituency of Kenya, a petition to that MP. Now that, that MP will be unable to go to parliament and vote uh, you know, for this bill when they have a thousand signatures saying, we don't want this bill. It will send a very, very clear and strong message. And it could be a very powerful way of uh, mobilizing people countrywide. There are existing organizations that we can team up with. Um, and uh, I, think, I think we just need to get moving on this because uh, this, the, the bill is going to pass through parliament while we are still talking. I'm, I really feel this is very, very urgent. There, there are, there's a whole list of other recommendations that I made around um, visibility, publicity, media. Definitely, we have to go way big on uh, getting uh, media attention to this. Um, I don't know if, Sheila, if you can share the proposal that I sent or, or how are we gonna move forward on actions? Thanks, Paula. Um, before we respond to you, um, I can see Washira's hand is up. Washira, you can ask your question. Yeah, I, I think I want to echo first what uh, Paula is saying, that we need an action. But then I, um, I think um, it's Sheila was presenting and she said that we have about 7.5 uh, percent of uh, our forest cover. And then when Warubengo was speaking, I started asking myself a very simple question. If part of Njoro all the way to Mao is forest land and Langata is forest land where people are settled and Kimende, then do we really have the correct data of our forest cover? Isn't it not okay for us now one of the actions that we need to take is to actually get to document what forest is left, which is on, we reconcile the records of Kenya forest vis-a-vis -vis the reality on the ground, because then it could also be, that data could speak volumes to many people because we may find we don't even have that 7.5. Uh, that we, 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 we are talking about. I think your forum, uh, the Kenya Forest Forum can start looking uh, at that kind of a things. Just see how many, I've seen some data being given here, which are depressing. Um, it, it is quite in order for us to take one action that we do a stock taking as uh, CK. Uh, I don't know how that will be done, but I would want us to do it um, that we take stock and say, on record, this is the kind of forests that we have. But in reality, this is what we need to remind us. But then there is another danger, and I've seen Paul have speak about it, uh, regularizing and sanitizing uh, the issue of that. If we keep accepting these regularizations of illegal as, um, things, then it becomes the first stop. They don't need to change the law. They just need to move into forests, wait for a few years, regularize. And then the vicious cycle uh, continue. So we also need to have a strategy that will either put a cutoff for people who have done that so that we do not keep regularizing illegal acts uh, years after years, and, and that will make a difference. But for now, where we are right now, what do we need to do? I think we need to have a clear engagement with the parliamentarians and the, the media, you know, and, and, and uh, a clear for a statement from the Board of Kenya Forest and the Kenya Forest Service, clearly saying that we do not want this kind of a thing. And then if we can follow up with what Paula have just said about the signatures, we they, 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 a thousand votes in the today's political arena, the balancing that needs to be done 
a thousand votes is real uh, strategy because nobody wants to be defeated with 300 votes and he knows it's the people who voted for him or that. So it might be a deterrent, but as the case is, I want us to have an action point that we start preparing for a legal affront on that amendment. Because the way it is, um, as Paula has said, it may pass while we are still talking. The best we can do is to have at the back of our mind uh, uh, filing a petition in the London Environment Court. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Washira, um, for your contribution. Um, a response to you, Paula, when we started this session, one of the things that uh, we mentioned was that this meeting must come up with action plans, the things we need to do going forward uh, in terms of either stopping um, the amendments or what we plan to do as the civil society. And so we really appreciate that um, that is the same view that you have. Um, I am trying to look at um, the recommendations you had uh, shared with us and I will share them with the team here and see if uh, those are the things that we need to focus on, plus what Washira is proposing, uh, filing a petition, filing a, a case at the Lands and Environment Court, or uh, we have other suggestions from members. Um, but before that, we have Charles Maelo, whose hand is up. Charles? Charles, can you can unmute yourself and uh, speak? Okay. My concern is about riparian lands. Many places have been encroached, and the, we we are not we are not targeting the ten percent forest cover as expected. So the bill should be should address this and it has it have it has to be a must to have riparian uh, lands replaced everywhere in the country thank you charles um Nora, you have another contribution no uh, thanks 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 charles we will um consider your your question your input paula sorry that's an old hand oh okay that's fine um do i hand over the session to you steve uh, so that you can lead us through the action Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, members present here, and, uh, for the quite honest discussion. Uh, and I think uh, uh, we have uh, discussed quite a, a bit in terms of where the problem is. Uh, and I know that uh, this issue of regularizing, I think it's, uh, it's something that we need to look at it in terms of how do we stop sanitizing. There is also the issue of uh, parliamentarians from areas where forests have been encroached, who are the ones who are actually causing that. And then also there's the issue of uh, population growth and demand for land that is also leading to that. And then all these pending historical excisions that are here to be regularized are some of the issues that we need to deal with. And I think there is also the issue of, uh, of uh, a kind of slowness of the government agencies in expediating uh, some of these decisions. Now, in order to address uh, uh, these issues, uh, I would like to propose that we set up a small team uh, that would actually look at it in terms of also the advocacy strategy and all the ongoing petitions that are going uh, so that we have a team coordinating because the challenge for civil society is when we have everybody doing something differently and the other person doesn't know what is being done. And so at the end of the day, we end up not flowing in a smooth manner. And so the purpose of today's meeting is for us to set up a small team 
that will then consolidate all these ideas that are that we've discussed today into an action into an advocacy strategy and then through that then i would be able to move as a team together in a in a in a in a fashion that we will also be able to evaluate and see what does success look like so that's my proposal uh, that we quickly set up a team and then this team would then um would then uh, kind of set the agenda and then we'll have reporting mechanisms my proposal for this team uh, i'll just propose a few is that we already know that east africa wildlife society and kenya forest working group are working on that so that they form part and parcel of this team that we want to put together uh CAK will help uh, coordinate uh, the, the meetings and, uh, and uh, the other actions that are required. Um, and then uh, I will now open it up to any other team that feels, or any other individual that feels they would like to be part and parcel of this team. So I've only proposed those to uh, CAK to help with the coordination and then the Kenya Forest and East Africa Wildlife Society. So. I welcome any other proposals for this small team. Now, what are the terms and reference for the team? The terms and reference for the team is to develop um, an action, uh, to develop a strategy that would actually help us deal with this current issue, and then also other related issues with the review of the law and the legislation so that we can expedite a lot of issues. There are also other things that have come up in terms of us being able to find out what is the status of uh, forest in the country. So we look, so this team also will look at it in terms of how can we access uh, the information that we need uh, so that then we are able to know which forests are intact and which ones are gone. Uh, but I know the terms of reference will keep on increasing as the team needs. So that's my proposal. I'd like to hear any proposals, uh, either in terms of reference or any member who is willing to join the team. The floor is open. Thank you, Steve. Um, I have a comment. Uh, I, I support the so, uh, having a small team idea, uh, but also since not everyone on this call will be part of that small team because we are many, we can be part of that small team. I would propose that uh, we come up, we suggest uh, some of the ideas or actions that we would like uh, the small team to focus on. Uh, like had, Paula had suggested that we uh, we start an online campaign, we meet members of parliament, and so so I believe that some members of this team here, some members present on this call, have other suggestions that we can add on. Um, because I have uh, the court case that we start a court case from Ashira, and uh, the seven points from Paula. So if there's anyone else that has anything else that uh, they feel the small team should uh, also focus on, please uh, share with us on this call so that you can also put it down. You can raise up your hand and then we'll allow you to speak. Uh, Rudolf? Uh, yes, Sheila, I'm just reading that section, that four, two, when you read at it, when you read it clearly, it, of course, you know that eventually the petition will end in parliament. The only thing is through the recommendation of the service. So I think the small team can also look in terms of at the service, do we have guidelines in terms of decisions or moving that petition to parliament or even trying to understand what is it that probably informs decisions in terms of moving a petition to parliament? Do we have a procedure or why do we have fear? Why do we have uh, some lack of clarity on probably what happens there? So that as we are saying no, at least it can also be clear what could be some of the barriers or imaginary barriers that makes parliamentarians want to do a different uh, route or way. So I think the small team can also look into that. 
so that we have clarity in terms of that process that goes on there. Thank you. Thank you, Rudolph. That's noted. Um, any other? Yes, Paula. Um, Sheila, I want to share the strategy that I sent to Steve and um, um, Lucy. Can I share it on the chat? Yes. Okay, one second. Why isn't it sharing? Okay. As Paula shares, do we have any other person with any other strategy? Maybe, maybe, uh, Lu um, sorry, Sheila, can I just uh -huh. read, read out the main point? Sure, 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 you can read it. Because I want everyone, because we need to start somewhere. People can take yeah. it, tear it apart, add more things, remove things, whatever, but it's a start. Okay. Um, so the, the aim of the strategy is to prevent the bill from being tabled, or if it gets tabled, making sure it gets shot down. Um, so I, as of now, I don't think it's been tabled, right? Has it been tabled yet? Yes, it has been tabled. Okay, it has been tabled. When was it tabled, Steve? Uh, the bill, the first reading was done uh, uh, last week. Oh, okay, then maybe. Yeah, I, the first the reading was, was last week. Yeah. Okay, I was watching on TV. Okay, so what we need is a strategy around information on the process. We need, we need, we need a, um, what would I say? We need to have information sharing. Somebody needs to track where is it, what's happening next, and how do we engage? So we have written petitions. Quite a few people have signed petitions. Many of them have been online and it, it demonstrates, I mean, tens of thousands of people have signed those petitions, but those petitions which are online will not be seen by parliamentarians. They will not, they will ignore them. We need physical petitions to be taken to parliament, to the clerk. So we need a whole strategy around getting those petitions to the clerk. And I suggested one idea which came from some young people who said they could use these networks, the, um, the forest users network to actually get uh, 1000 signatures per uh, constituency and have those done like urgently. It will cost money, but I'm pretty sure that it's an easy thing to fundraise. And I know there are organizations out there that would want to help. Um, so the petition, uh, I know that CAK has written up a petition. It needs to be done in a way that's very easy for someone anywhere in the country to sign it and uh, send it in. Um, we also need to look at media, right? We need to get this thing mainstreamed in the media. So most journalists have really don't understand what is going on. What does it mean? What are the actual changes being proposed? So I propose we actually do a media training and we bring together the internews, which is uh, about 30 environmental journalists. They, uh, they, they produce um, articles Africa-wide and, and also international media, bring them together and do a one-day training. The training to explain what, are, what is being proposed, what are the implications from a biological perspective, whether it's climate change, species diversity, uh, communities, and of course, the economic, it could be timber, water, soil, and agricultural production and all that. So I think that this is really important that we actually do do a training for journalists to really understand so that we get a huge amount of media in the run up so that no parliamentarian can say I didn't really understand. Uh, secondly, uh, we need to identify the organizations that can um, that can participate and work on the ground in all these different rural areas. You know, the national forests are all over the whole country. There are hundreds of them. Uh, those little small organizations that are everywhere, we need to empower them. We need to support them and help them to understand how they can participate and what role they can play. We really need to decentralize uh, this power that, that, uh, and access that we have. Uh, the third idea, is um, a media campaign. So this is different from the journalists who are writing articles. Now I'm saying we need a media campaign that is specifically about the forest. When we did hands off our elephants, we got a campaign, comp a PR company to help us design uh, the campaign. We sat with them, they did drawings, they came up with visuals that we could use, everybody could use them in their social media, on their t-shirts, on the streets and their banners, whatever. 
because I do think this is going to end up in the streets. And I think we should actually start looking at uh, physical demonstrations, which is what catches the eye of uh, the media as well as the politician. So we need a name for this campaign. Um, I think uh, some have been suggested, but we need to agree on the name of a campaign that is so compelling that it's about our forests and our future. Uh, but really something that every Kenyan can say, I'm a part of this, you know? Uh, fourthly, we need a mechanism to track all of, the, all of this work and the petitions. Uh, somebody at CAK or somewhere who is actually going to physically say we have received 5,000 petitions or whatever, you know, keep the numbers rising so that now we have a centralized place to disseminate the information to the media so that they know what they're doing. And then finally, I think we need to bring together the MPs to help them to understand why there is so much outrage among the public and the different sectors of the public. I had suggested working with the Parliamentary Caucus on SDGs and business, but I, I hear that uh, CAK has also been talking to the uh, IPPC, which is the international, what is it called? ICCF, sorry, International Conservation Caucus. Conservation Caucus, yeah, of yeah. Kenya. So um, I think we need to, to uh, actually agree on which caucus are we going to be using because it costs money to mobilize and bring together parliamentarians. They all need money to be facilitated, to get somewhere. Uh, you have to buy them food. And then you need speakers who will do those presentations to help them to really understand what is at stake. Why is this important? Because when this bill goes to parliament and it's opened up for discussion, you want these parliamentarians to be able to speak from a point of knowledge and authority and say, I've spoken to these experts foresters, biologists, climate experts, soil experts, whatever it is, communities. And we need them to actually have that firsthand knowledge that they can then um, speak out in parliament so that it's not just one of those things where, where people just are quiet because they don't, they're not really sure because this, this bill is not very obvious. So those are some of the ideas that I'm, I'm put, putting forward, which I hope uh, the group can consider. Thanks, Paula. Um, the team will uh, work on that, uh, the, your proposals. They are very nice proposals, I must say. Um, they will cost money, but um, really we are a team here and uh, we can work something out for that. Um, I can see- Hila, uh, Hila. sorry, a quick yes. one, just on the money. Yes. Please let us not start with uh, worrying about the money. Let us have a kick-ass campaign because a kick-ass campaign will attract funding. We know this. We know this. So let us not start with being fearful of the cost. Let us put mm -hmm. down those costs. If it's 10 million shillings, let us go out there and find the donors. You know, okay. if we lose our forests, it's more than 10 million shillings. We're talking of billions it's irres it, they are irreplaceable so let us start with a, a winnable campaign right we must fight for a winnable campaign and we go out there fundraising for a winnable campaign thanks paula for your clarification i will give emily the chance to speak as well emily We can't hear you, Emily. No. Your voice is so faint. Um, maybe you can try and increase the volume. Yeah. Yes, I think. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh We can't hear you. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the session, you mentioned that uh, 
and the individual organizations will have a chance to share or contribute uh, to the discussions mm -hmm. and uh, up the, the members of the alliance of what uh, the individual organizations have been doing. So I thought if there'll be no chance to share, and then that small team that has been constituted needs to find out what has also been done so far by the other organizations and how can that be enhanced as uh, as in having an overall big objective so that even when the individual organizations are doing their, their actions or they want to amplify the actions already done, it can be also useful because uh, advocacy is a game of numbers. In as much as we have the alliance, we need to have as many conservationists or conservation organizations as possible to raise voice so that uh, the parliamentarians can see that this is a matter of concern, not just to an alliance, not just uh, to a working group, but to as many as uh, uh, as many conservationists or conservation organizations as possible, right from the national level up to the grassroots level. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Emily, and I agree with you. Um, because of time, I think we can let the small team uh, look at what the other organizations have done. I've shared a link in, on the chat uh, where you can fill in your information just in case we don't have it in our database, then the small team will get to you um, for more information and of course to share what they've come up with because it's, um, it's a campaign for all of us. And so we all need to be involved uh, so that you can have all the numbers that you have mentioned. So please take a minute and fill in your details on the uh, Google form in the chat, in the chat, uh, chat box, uh, so that we can uh, be able to get back to you. So I think, um, uh, Steve, we can set up the small team now. Yes, actually, I wanted us to set up the small team. And based on what Emilia said, I also wanted to clarify that this is not a CAK driven process. Uh, it's about it's about us working together as a team. So uh, what uh, I would like us to do is I would like us to be open, uh, depending on what you've been doing individually as your organization. Uh, you know, you also feel free to join this particular team. Uh, so that we can consolidate our efforts and our action. There are some points where working individually helps and there are some points where coming together helps and I think that's the entire purpose of that. Nobody is coming here to take over anybody's responsibility but we want to have this particular action coordinated in a strategic way so that each and every organization involved also feels that they have space and leverage to work on and where we need to convene together then we can easily come up together. So as we compose this team kindly feel free that uh, it doesn't matter how small your contribution or your effort is, at the end of the day, it does matter. So we can proceed now and receive nominations uh, from individuals and also organizations that want to be present in this, uh, in this small team that will move this agenda. Thank you. So we will need volunteers. Uh, how many people are we looking at, Steve? Um, Anne, what's, what's your viewpoint? Let's hear from Anne first. Oh, Anne take, yes. Right. In terms of uh, the numbers? Yeah, how we proceed. How big do we make the team? Do we make it small? Oh, okay. Or do we have, or do we have uh, groups that we know are already working so that we can yeah. work with those existing ones? I think it would be good for us to coordinate that so that there is a central place where everything is just flowing, you know, in a strategic manner, and then the team can agree on how do we, you know, distribute this information. Thank you, Steve. I know already the Kenya Forest Working Group has a technical committee, and I know you're part of this team. So I'll stand guided, but we have uh, representation by institutions. Already the working group has um, the Kenya Forest Service, Kefri. We have the CAK, we have Rhino Arc, we have, um, we have uh, the East African Wildlife Society and uh, Greenbelt. 
So I would, uh, I would suggest that if we have, uh, I mean, some institutions that would want, even WWF is part of it, and I can see them here as well. So Steve, if, can we join in as a group or you have a separate group that would, would link to, the, to a, working, a working group? Because I, I like the proposals by the members and Paula on the strategies, which more, are more or less what you are doing. Uh, but if you can have, uh, if we can link what you're doing with what you're doing, then it will, it will add more value. Uh, Steve, what do you think? Excellent. <clears throat> yeah, the reason why I singled you out was so that you are able to let us know the processes that are already happening in the Kenya Forest Working Group. So yes. that then rather than starting another group, let's work with the existing group. I think that's a consensus that I wanted us to arrive uh, because there's already a group existing. If we can work with that existing group, then it would be okay so that then any other member who's not a member of that group, then yeah. at this particular point, we can then admit them onto that group. And then we I can pick up the agenda from that uh, meeting. That's perfectly uh, great because we are currently working on the strategy. And what Paula has proposed is what uh, is, is already in the, in the plan. Eh? So, um, and when you, when you talk about reaching out to members of parliament, we need to really, I mean, uh, work together on that. So if we can have more members from the CAK join the bigger the, the, the working group, then we are happy to 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 be to, uh, to welcome you to be part of that team. Excellent. Any objection to that proposal? We join the team that is already existing at the East Africa Wildlife Society. Any objection to that proposal? Okay, silence means there is no objection and by consensus, I think it's been adopted uh, that uh, we join the team uh, that is already working at the East Africa Wildlife Society. Thank you so much. Uh, Charles, I, I can see your hand was up or that was a confirmation the, 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 that, that was a confirmation that we joined the existing team. Sorry, you need to unmute. Thank you, thank you, Steve. I was concerned about the, being represented by our organization, Nexa Kenya, but as you say, the, the events have overtaken my, my points. So I concur with what you have just concluded. Okay, thank you very much. Actually, what we'll do, Charles, is we'll uh, reach out to Dr. Walubengo and also invite uh, Nexka Kenya also to be part of uh, that group. Dr. Walubengo is the co-chair of the National Environmental Civil Society Alliance. Yeah. Okay, I can see Christian's hand is up. Yes, many thanks for Steve. Uh, Steve, um, I believe uh, we have a problem of time. Uh, the matter is already being tabled and we will have to make sure that we are moving very fast on, on this one. So I think we should put ourselves uh, um, some, uh, some uh, timelines, uh, understanding when do we have, or when do we need to have an agreed work plan in place? When do we start specific actions? When do we follow on other actions? I think everything has to be properly set out with, uh, with properly uh, established timelines. Otherwise, we may be uh, discussing the way we are doing it in two weeks from now, while actually the bill will pass. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Christian, for that concern. And do we, uh, when, when, when are you scheduled the next meeting? Or do you think uh, we can come up with timelines, at least for this yes. strategy? Yeah. I, I, I want to propose, Steve, that we do a joint uh, action plan together with you. With the, with the new proposals, with timelines, and the people responsible for that. And also, if the, apart, I know Nature Kenya is part of the technical working group, but I also, if there's an other organization you think uh, would, would, would uh, join that team apart from you, I think that's welcome. But let's put our heads together. Probably by the end of the day, we have that actual plan with the, with the, with the suggestions from this team. Excellent. So. Can we schedule a meeting um, this week for the for that team to actually put uh, some actions together because time is running out. 
somebody earlier, earlier on addressed the question that the that uh, the bill is coming for parliament uh, today. I've actually gone through the order paper. What is listed for debate today is the Wildlife Conservation and Management Act, which is a bill originating from the Senate. And the bill wants to kind of uh, repeal the miscellaneous amendments that uh, replace the county, the, count, the county conservation, wildlife conservation committees. So it's different from the forest one. The forest one went through the first reading. And also just to give you an idea, uh, based on what uh, Honre Bogacu shared yesterday, it's now the bill will be subjected to public consultation. And in fact, one of the things he mentioned was that uh, they are going to let us know when the public consultation process starts so that then we can work towards it. So I think we quickly need to come up with speed and put our act together. So and if you can convene a meeting this week, I think we'd appreciate so that we can, uh, we can actually get that strategy out so that we can consolidate all the actions together. Good, I think that's in order. Um, okay. Excellent, thank you. So over to you, Sheila. I think we have agreed, uh, the, uh, the team, and we've also agreed on the issues that the team is supposed to pick up with. Uh, and so back to you, Sheila. <laughs> thank you so much, Steve, and thank you, Anne. Um, Dr. Paula, you had dropped, you had stepped out uh, a bit. So we have agreed that we are joining the already existing uh, working group. Um, and so Antec An from East Africa Wildlife uh, Society is, we'll call a meeting uh, this week. And today is on Tuesday. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So Anne is, uh, planning to call a meeting this week so that we can be able to agree on the action plans because this is a, an urgent matter. We need to move with speed and see what we can do. So we will uh, loop in our life direct, Nature Kenya as you have suggested, and natural justice. Uh, in case we don't have their contacts, we will get uh, to you so that you can be able to share the contacts and uh, the contact persons for the different organizations you've proposed. And then now we can be able to move forward. Um, I think uh, with that, we have now our action plan for this session because we wanted to come up with an action plan what we intend to do um, as an alliance and also as conservationists in the country. And since we already now have a group, a working group that is going to work on the different action plans that we have, I thank you so much for attending this meeting. And I want to say that we have come to the end of this session. Unless we have a burning issue, we are 12 minutes past the agreed time. We we're supposed to finish at 11.30. But I thank you for uh, being patient with us and staying on through um, past the 12 minutes. Um, if there's anything else that we want to communicate with you, I hope you have filled in the attendance form uh, on chat. And also, um, hmm, greetings. Okay. And so I hope that you have filled in in the attendance form and we will be able to get back to you uh, with the way forward after creating the, after meeting with the team that was set up by East Africa Wildlife Society and other partners. So uh, once again, thank you so much for joining this meeting. These are monthly sessions that we hold as an alliance with our members. And we will let you know when our next one is coming up. It might be still on forest or any another topic. I don't know. Um, Paula, is your issue a burning issue? that you want to share before we close the session? Quick one, a quick one before Paula. Uh, before Paula, Ante, could you note this, that uh, Michelle Akini is saying that uh, the Forest Society of Kenya is interested in joining the team. Have you taken note of that? Taken note, I've seen the chat. Excellent, thank you. No. Yeah, my point is actually quite related, Steve. Um, I've seen that uh, the poster that was created got shared quite a bit, but without the Zoom link. And quite a few people are disappointed they didn't know about this meeting. And I, I did try to ask, is this open to outside 
uh, not just CAK members. I'm not sure if I got a response, but uh, I wonder if we can do something around, uh, you know, this issue is of great concern to many, many, many Kenyans and organizations. And it's a pity if any group is left out, especially if the group has some uh, potential influence. Um, so I, I feel like we need to have also a strategy around when you have the, when we have these meetings, who uh, can it be clear who who is to be attending them? Because I think that the poster didn't say CAK, and I've seen we have lots of people who are not CAK members on this group. Um, but what can we do so that others don't feel left out? We kind I think for this particular matter, we want as many different organisations and individuals to be participating. Thank you, Paula. Uh, that is noted. Normally, the conservation conversations are open, not only locked to Conservation Alliance members, but if you know any other group that uh, has not participated, kindly share those details with us. We'll share them with Anne so that we take them to the other uh, um, um, uh, to the other meeting that is happening at the East Africa Wildlife Society, so that then we grow and update everyone on what's happening on issues regarding forest. So thank you so much. Well, Lubengo is saying, and let's try and get as many people on board as possible. Uh, but I know it's only the first planning, uh, the small team that is going to come up with the strategy. But we'll try and get as many people as possible onto that group so that they get informed and involved. Thank you. Uh, thank you so Back much. You. And it was a pleasure having you all. Uh, we will get back to you either on email or phone. Uh, with the next steps after Anne sets up the meeting later this week. For CAK members, see you on Thursday. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye bye. Sheila. Yes, Steve. Yeah, I think it, I think it was a good meeting. Yes, yes. Um, yes. Because because now we've shifted the pressure now to the East Africa Wildlife Society because mm -hmm. that's where the experts actually are on forest matters. Mm. Even though even though we also have a, a constituency that uh, is interested, I think mm -hmm. for us what we will do is um, we will keep on updating our members, particularly this list on what is happening. Yeah. So that way, I think it frees us from uh, all the hula baloo and everything, mm -hmm. uh, so that we go to the wider group. I'm very excited about that, rather than duplicate.